physics of amusement park. Not sure this is very amusing, but uh, there is a large vertical cylinder. Vertical G is pointing down. So I'm not sure if you have seen this, but uh, this actual, actually exists in some amusement parks. So people are tied initially to the wall like that, you're braced in, and then the cylinder starts rotating after it reaches, so it, it reaches a certain angular velocity omega, uh, at which point the braces are opened and amusingly you don't fall down, you end up stuck to the wall, well, at least by friction. No, just by friction, in fact. Uh, so the question is, uh, so there is this coefficient of friction, static friction mu between you and the wall. So you end up rotating. So how much friction do you need, or how much omega do you need, uh, for people not to fall down when the brace is open? This is the problem. So how do you go about solving this? Uh, so we need, to, we need the free body diagram of this person. So uh, here's the person. What's, what forces are acting on him? First, there is, as usual, his mass m times g, acting down. Uh, there is the normal force. Now, I'm assuming well, this is pointing to the center uh, of the cylinder. So this is exactly the position he is in. So there's the normal force. Now, uh, is there any other force? Answer is yes, there is a friction force. Otherwise, he would just have fallen down. So the friction force will try to resist his falling. Hopefully, it will stop him. Uh, now, what is his acceleration? His acceleration is to the left A, his centripetal acceleration. That's what he needs to actually continue circular motion. So A would be uh, omega squared times R. One thing I didn't say, of course, is the radius of this cyl large cylinder is R. Now, uh, I wrote A as positive because I made it point towards the center. So don't be confused. If you see minus omega squared r elsewhere, that's when you define your uh, positive direction to be outwards. I didn't. So it's plus in that direction. Now, uh, I have my free body diagram. I have my acceleration. So I just need to write my equations. Not too hard. Now, of course, uh, no angles, that's nice. So in the vertical direction, and I can start with the horizontal direction. So the only force acting is the normal force. N is just mass times acceleration. So I have m omega squared r. So without the normal force, you would not turn. You would just go out. Good. Uh, in the vertical direction, I get, now the thing is, the force of friction uh, we are going to say, normally, the force of friction is equal to uh, mu times uh, the normal force. Now, but you must realize that this is actually the upper limit. It will not act this strong in any case. Otherwise, you will find that it will throw you up. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Now, we're trying to find the limiting case, and we'll try to understand how much friction or how much omega we need, the relation between these two. Uh, if you try to work, work things out with less than or greater than signs, you will end up confused somewhere. So the best method is to just find the limiting case where the friction force is just enough and then just 
think about it. What needs to be large and what needs to be small? So this is what I'm going to do right now. So in the limiting case, where the guy is just about to slip, the force of friction is at the limit. So uh, this will be mu times the normal force, which is just m omega squared r. Uh, so I can write my equation in the vertical, in which case, uh, so the force of friction minus mg, and I don't want the guy to be falling down, so this will just be zero. So essentially, uh, your force of friction must be the same as mg, which is mu m omega squared r. Now, your secret lies there, the masses cancel, okay, so we can look at it two ways. I can solve for omega or I can solve for mu. So I will look for how fast I need to be rotating. That's, that's the parameter I can play with when I'm operating this large cylinder. All right, so I will now solve for omega. So omega is going to be square root of uh, g over mu r. Now, uh, question number one is, are the units right? Does it make sense? Uh, now, of course, well, I found an equality now. It's just a limiting case. So is it, is it going to be greater than, less than what is the answer? Now, we said we we're going to think about it. Now is the time. So if you think about it, uh, if you don't turn this at all, at omega equals zero, everybody will fall down like a rock. So you want omega to be larger than a value. If you turn it fast enough, then people get stuck on the wall. So I will just say, if it is greater than or equal to that, then everything will work out just fine. Uh, now, are the units right? G is an acceleration, which is uh, length per time squared. Uh, mu is dimensionless. Uh, R is just a length. So I get the dimensions in the square root is 1 over t squared. Square root of it is 1 over t. So omega is 1 over t, right? It's a frequency. It's radians per second. Radians is essentially unitless, so it's 1 over time. So the units come out correct. Uh, does it make sense? Well, if you have more gravity, you need to turn faster. Makes sense. Otherwise, people fall down. If you had no gravity, you wouldn't have to turn at all. Uh, larger radius means uh, less omega. Does that make sense? Well, if you think about the centripetal force required, it does make sense because omega squared r. The farther you go, the more centripetal force you get. Mu is in the bottom, which makes sense. If you have no friction, no matter how fast you turn this thing, people are going to fall. Now, uh, very small estimation. Uh, before we started solving this, we were arguing if it is safe uh, to do this, actually. Well, people don't fall down, but how safe is safe? So the thing is, if you take uh, a coefficient of friction as small as 0 0.05, which is pretty small. Uh, and we can take large cylinder, how large, at least it's going to be 10 meters diameter, 10 meters across, makes sense. So five, five meters of radius, and G I'll take to be 10. So if you take an estimate, so G is 10, and at the bottom I have 0 0.05 is 1 over 20. So I end up with a 20 on top. In the bottom I have a 5. So 10 over 5 is a 2. So omega must be greater than or equal to the square root of 40, which is to the nearest integer 7. 
<laughs> what? It's two pi. Two pi. <laughs> Squared. <laughs> Pretty close. Okay. <laughs> Omega is greater than or equal to 2 pi to an excellent approximation, <laughs> uh, which means uh, your frequency is about 1 revolutions per second, which is doable. So this will work. I mean, even with, if you go 10 times less, it will only be like 3 times faster. So the thing is generally safe. Yeah. And that's the solution to our problem.